Well, the American Doll Company, I'm sure you've seen those cute American dolls, uh, is angering parents with a new book they have out teaching kids about so-called gender expression. Now, the book actually teaches kids as young as three how to change their gender by asking doctors or adults they trust for puberty blockers oh and offering advice on transitioning. The book even lists, uh, provides a list of resources for organizations here, as we said, if they don't have an adult they can trust. Mm. Okay. Mm. Let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, back with us, uh, Brian Anderson, as, as well as Whitley Yates. Um, I've done, my daughter has had American Girl dolls. Uh, I've dolls. been to Atlanta and had lunch with them. And, and a tea party? It, yes, you have a little lunch and they get all made up. The dolls sit at the table. That perfect. It's adorable. Yeah. The, the, th the way it works is that they sell these books that go along with the doll. The doll has a name. Mm -hmm. So Josefina is one of, it was one of them that my girls had, a Hispanic character. My girls are Hispanic, so that they write about the background of this girl. And they have um, uh, all kinds of backgrounds. And you read them, so that's kind of a cool shtick, mm -hmm. right? I mean, oh, yeah, it's like, oh, you got it. And you learn a little bit, you become educated. What they don't do is talk about sexuality. Mm -hmm. They're just talking about these characters and you get to know them. And my girl has had white, black, Hispanic, and, and Asian, and, and it was great. But this, like, now you're getting political. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, and, and to the point also, and, and Whitley, I want to get your thoughts on this. It actually says in this book, I was looking a, a little bit uh, closer earlier, and it said, you know, as your body starts to change and develop, you might be uncomfortable with that. So there are ways that you can slow it down. They're called oh. puberty blockers, talking about hair growth and, and that you might not be comfortable. But then, uh, as we mentioned, giving a list of organizations around the country where these kids, children, can go if they don't have, quote, an adult they can trust. Uh, Whitley, your thoughts? I'm so sad to see this, um, as I have a seven-year-old daughter who has an American Girl doll and has read those stories and identified with the different characters um, and those in the book. But this is too far. Once again, this is too far pushing an agenda on the children. Um, and it's really sad to see that if a young girl is reading this and feels uncomfortable in the progression, the natural progression um, of getting older and these things that we are going to then lead her or groom her into this area of getting puberty blockers, et cetera, instead of empowering her to understand this journey, to speak about it with her parents, and to know that even though it may be uncomfortable, the journey is going to be beautiful and wonderful, and the woman that she will become is going to be great. Instead, we are pushing this down our children's throat. As young as three, we're not teaching ABCs and one, two, threes. We're pushing puberty blockers on our children, and I think that that is just terrible and ridiculous. I hope American Girl backs away from this and drops it like it's hot. Brian. I don't know how we got here. You're a doll maker. <laughs> Stick to what you do. Sell your product. Stop selling us on your wokeism. And that's, you know, Mattel owns this company. Uh, maybe everyone should write Mattel and tell them how they think about this because it's just so far off the beaten path. My daughter didn't have an American doll. They're pretty expensive, from what I recall. They, they are. You know, they but um, but again, they tell the story, and to ins to insert this into it is just it's so disruptive and. Yeah. It takes away parents' responsibilities as well. It's almost the, like they're doing an end run around people. And they, they were given as gifts uh, for my sister, you know, my girl's aunt. Uh, Whitley, what is, it just seems like there's an age inappropriateness to this. Mm -hmm. Because there's a certain age that, that you, you're in it right now. There's a certain age for American Girl dolls. And that's not an age I want to be talking to them about these kinds of things. Anytime you have a toy manufacturer that is pushing puberty blockers and pharmaceutical pills on our young, impressionable children, I would be alarmed. Um, and I think that it's something that all parents should be alarmed by. And to take it a step further, if the parents didn't read the books and the children read the books themselves and came and asked their parents about these types of things, that would also be a problem. We should not yeah. be indoctrinating mm -hmm. our children with these ideas. Uh, yeah, and I mean, not surprisingly, parents have slammed the book as deceptive and dangerous. One Amazon reviewer wrote, your new book is disgusting. Um, a lot of parents are boycotting. Uh, Brian, as you mentioned, Mattel mm -hmm. makes the dolls, are, are boycotting American dolls and Mattel. But uh, Brian, my question here is, you know, you, you think of you think of, of capitalism. Okay, it's a, it's a company. They make dolls. Who are 
they really appealing to? Are they appealing uh, to the kids? Are they question. appealing to the parents? Doesn't seem like they are. Seems like a small so, market. Yeah, sure. exactly. Yeah. Who are you appealing to and why? Well, I guess they're not worried about who they're appealing to. You know, they were on a mission, and that's it. They're mission-focused, and that's where it's going to go astray. And they've got to be told in no uncertain terms. And hopefully, you know, Mattel get the me gets the message. But they're taking, they're taking responsibility away from parents. That's pure and simple. Just like the professor we just spoke, spoke about yeah, earlier. It seems like they're, they're missing their, their target audience. Yeah. It, it Kids does, it not only and does their it, parents. Yeah, exactly. It, because, it's, uh, Whitley, you can, I'm sure you can uh, avow, the, the, it, it's a great concept. And I think a lot of these stories are very interesting. And it makes the doll more than just this clump thing sitting there. It, it's like, oh, there's a story. And mm -hmm. I, an interesting story. And the... So that's all. So to, to then become preachy about something that's political yeah. and about uh, sexuality doesn't fit with the brand, like you're saying, Brian. Mm -hmm. Is that doesn't work? And like Not you're saying, all. Kat, this yeah. what's they, the market they, for they, this? They, they, they've if hijacked. If they had it. a transgender doll, if they had a transgender doll, and this was the story in the transgender doll's book, it would be more in line with how they have ran the brand in the past. But to just release a book without a doll or without anything for Great kids point. for wide consumption, I think it's, it's I think it's, um, we're, we're really misappropriating what yeah. we should be doing. And I'm, and I'm I, sad to see them. And I would yeah. still say age inappropriate yeah, for that. Irres yeah. Irresponsible, they marketed Absolutely. it t towards three through 12 year olds. Three year olds. Yeah. All right. Uh, Brian Whitley, thank you so much.